Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. This is Wednesday, 29th of June, and at about 2 to 2.30, we start getting Fed speak, etc., etc. Um, and the market, I think, is already discounted a lot. Now, what do you think the Fed is going to say? Well, I, I'm not sure that there are too many surprises, because even if there are, I know from Powell, the way Powell speaks, you're still going to moderate a little bit. You'll probably talk about 0.75. You might even mention a one if it's needed. Um, what, what we're really looking at here is the takeoff phase from the uh, mid-June lows in the different indices, and the doubt was at 29.653, had over a 2,000 point gain in one, two, three, four, five, in six sessions. It went all the way to 31,085. You can anticipate some kind of a pullback. I was actually anticipating that pullback Friday, soon after my show, even at about noon that day on Friday, I was thinking to myself, well, I, we're up three, three, four hundred points, I wouldn't be surprised if we were about to make some kind of a, a, a just a shorter term top have a bit of a rest over the weekend with that, with that, uh, what I thought at that time would be a Mariboza candle and then maybe a Doji candle on Monday and a bit of a pullback Tuesday and Wednesday we started running again. But instead what happened is we had another 400 points up in the Dow on Friday going to the close. Uh, with then, and it closed near the high. And then Sunday night, it went higher into Monday and then pulled back a little bit. And yesterday, it spiraled all the way um, to higher highs in the Dow and the, uh, in almost all the indices before giving it back. And that give back gave you almost, not quite, but almost a chap inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle. So the real issue here is for me, if you close underneath yesterday's low, uh, that was a low of 30,934.33 in the cash index. Um, that says you've got to now be a little bit careful because the stochastic's only at 44%. The MACD is good. The nine period needed a decent close yesterday. Even just a minus 200 would have done it to get the nine period moving average um, closer to crossing positive. But it is rising. As we're speaking, it's rising. And that says the moment that it turns green, You've got another positive, and that would confirm for me that what I uh, said, I, I should have waited until the end of the day, but I said uh, it's probably a buy mode in the Dow, meaning that we should go to higher highs. That means a leg C and then a uh, peak C and then a leg D, higher high, and then a uh, peak D. And this is the Chapman Wave Inside Track repellent zone, and this whole area is going to be really tough besides the inside Chapman Wave inside uh, wedge target resistance line, this little dashed green line, you've got a lot of resistance levels, even if there was a good close yesterday, um, there's a lot of resistance. So what I'm talking about is that the momentum from this extremely oversold condition in mid-June that we're looking at needs follow through. It needs to see, uh, let, how can I put it? It needs to see not just by the dips, it needs to see a broader, it was getting there on Friday, going into Monday, it was actually getting to be quite a broad move. Um, that's been narrowed quite a bit by yesterday's move down and even today's opening. So all I'm saying is I don't want to get too carried away. It was deeper than I anticipated, but then the move up was a little bit higher than I expected. That 400 points has been given back. And now it's important. So the Dow's up 134. It's going to struggle. I think I don't think it's going to be like up 250 going into the Fed. It'll probably pull back, hold tight. And then after the Fed speak comes, does it go, continue lower? I think all the news from the Fed part of it was kind of anticipated yesterday. So I'm not sure what we're waiting for here. That was just a, a sell-off that was derived from other factors. Uh, there were many factors, but let's just say, Looking at price alone, 
At this particular point, we've touched the 14-period moving average today at the high of 31,152 in the Dow. Not good enough. I want to see a close. I don't care how small it is, but a close above. Uh, let me give you the exact figure. The exact figure says, uh, here we go, the black line, 31,134. Today we hit uh, 31,152. I want to see a hair above the high that we've seen so far today. Sometime after the Fed, I don't care about before, but it's after the Fed speak at about 2.45 um, this afternoon. That's what I want to be seeing. Uh, if, if it isn't today, and there's just a narrow kind of a meandering, uh, indecisive move going to the close, by tomorrow we've got to see that. I'm just trying to make it as clear as possible. Yes, we are along the Dow. But once again, we managed to get the low, um, but that's uh, or close to the low. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say the low. Close to the low. Um, 29,653 was the low. We're, we're in the equivalent of uh, about uh, 31, so 30,000. Uh, did I say 30,000? Yeah, should be 30,000. Uh, that was over there. No, at about just over 30,000. So off the low. But that's not good enough. To me, good enough says... Taking out yesterday's high of 31,885 in the Dow, taking out yesterday's high of, oh, I forgot to type it in, I'll type it in now, of 39, 3945.86. Let me just type that in. 39.45.86. Uh, sometime in the next, I, I prefer it by Friday, uh, before the long weekend, that'll be great. But I, I, I'm not the market. I'm only telling you what I would prefer. <laughs> okay, oh, someone asked me, and I should have done it right away. They asked me about that peak D that was made yesterday live uh, uh, that turned out to be the high of the day. Could I just show that chart? Uh, oh, that was the 10-minute chart. Yep, that was the 10-minute chart. You remember all the things I wrote? Eiffel Tower, um, uppercase A from that peak D, um, reversal took out the 200-period moving average and that high in the 30, 3940s. That was it. And then what happened, you remember my other rule of thumb is that a narrow rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. Look at this. Look how the Dow has remained uh, within a couple of points. But let's just say between, let's go to that candle right there, uh, 220, uh, must be 1420. So that was yesterday afternoon at about uh, 3844. And let's go down to this low right here, uh, 3821. It remained in that range for tw over 12 hours. This is the this is the E mini that had a move of what 130, 100, what a, a huge move down yesterday, and then it gets stuck, and then it broke it by a little bit. It went above it by a fraction, and then it went back now, and then it made a low at, at 9:50 this morning. At 3812, uh, sorry, 3801.25. And here it is. This is the first time in a little while that the nine period moving average in the 10 minute is attempting to cross positive. So that's that. But look at the uh, two minute chart. Look at this beautiful pattern right here. Here it went into a narrow range between about 3820 and 38, I think it was about 10. And then it broke out PKBCDE. And then it stalled, made a little double top, pull back under the 200 feet moving average. Now look how important the 200 feet moving average is at 3820. I'll be back in a moment. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, so we're back. And let me do a couple of things here. So actually, while, while I've got the questions, because so many people ask me, maybe uh, three people ask me a question about Queb again today. Queb is, uh, this is the uh, Chinese internet company trading at uh, 32.87, uh, up, uh, no, down 46 cents. So there's an alternative count. And this is what happens in the chat wave. Every once in a while, it just breaks nominally to a slightly higher high. You remember my rule of thumb in the, in the, large rectangle which could become a lopsided cup formation um, that rule of thumb is said that flagpole when there's a sharp move down and then you start to see higher highs and slightly higher highs higher lows um, and you make it the, the rule of thumb is it should go to and probably it used to always be in a different in a shorter time frame but for the last six months, we've seen so many in the same time frame, especially daily charts, go to right on, just under, or just above the previous high, the flagpole high. In this case, the high of 34. No, I think it just missed it. The high in Greenwich uh, Shares China Internet ETF on uh, uh, June the 8th, I think. Yep, the 8th at 34.12. Uh, it pulls back sharply to the 20 to 28, 34, 12. And then what happens is it makes peak A, gray peak A because it's under the previous D, gray peak B because it's under the previous D. And then it squeaks above, just above, slightly high to 34, was that 28? I think it was 34, maybe 30, uh, 34, 36 on the 27th, three days ago, and then pulls back. So that didn't go to a D. That went to a C or an E. The reason why the E is kicked in, because this pullback at peak D at 34.12 didn't go even close to the starting point. If it breaks the starting point, it's all over. That that buy, buy mode is done. In this particular instance, the 25, 23.72 low of the 12th of May, uh, we were way above. We were at uh, 20, was it 8 something, 28.95. 
So um, that keeps it in play. In other words, and the line period is still strongly above the 14. And the MACD is good, close to turning down, but it's, it's still good. Stochastic is at 80%, not great, but good at 80%. And the on-balance volume is slightly overbought. So I, I, that's where you say, well, if I'm saying peak C, it means I definitely am looking for a D. But if I keep the old notation, it says just be a little cautious right here. You've got to wait for this to prove itself. So the old E is in place, but there could be a brand new C says C says it could go one penny above the previous high to start a leg D. Doesn't tell you how high. That's all it says. So at this particular point, uh, one of the one of the questioners says. Um, I, I'm in from earlier down. I'm looking to add. Where would I add? And this is where I say this is the most risky add-on on a real short-term trade. Wonderful to get from 32.85 uh, right now to 34, let's say 30. Okay? I mean, to a 9, 10% gain, which is like that. But most importantly, if this, if this closes under the 14-period moving average of 31.96, all of a sudden, I'm looking at an arch formation, the dreaded H pattern, that says, whoops, be careful. Not only that, if I look at the weak needs on to a leg D in the shortest series of peaks you can get. Look, peak A takes uh, one week and second week it goes to B, then it pulls back for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine weeks and on the tenth week it just squeaks to a C and here it's squeaked to a D. And that just says to me, look at the way the technicals have strengthened so much and this is all you can get. I'm going to say I'd be a little careful about adding right now. So I could have done that real quickly. I could have said, <laughs> don't add right now. You have to wait for the evidence. And even if it goes to a slightly higher high, there's a really good chance it's coming back to retest the 32s. So I'm just going to say, hold off for now. You're in a good position. You, you're doing well. Don't, don't aggravate it by suddenly having another position that you aren't. At this particular point, there's enough to say there's a good chance that it does squeak to a leg D, but I don't want squeaks. I want a really strong play, and it's in an up mode, making higher highs and higher higher lows. That's all. Everything's good. I'm just talking about risk reward. But if you do have done your own homework and you still like what's going on, because even in three days with three red candles, it's given back hardly anything, then I would say. You can have a small position if the Dow later today, but going into Thursday, is actually seeing uh, 31,200s. I suspect that this is going to move up as well. And then you could add to that position. So the only thing I'm going to say to you right now is if, if, you, if you've done your homework and all you're looking for is the number to go to actually add with the, with the, with the least risk, the low today is 32.58. It's a 32.74. I'm going to say you could just start a small position now at 32.75. I would have a stop so tight that uh, yeah, just it, it, just an eye blink will take you out. That's why it has to prove itself. So 32.55, 56, that would be my stop. I could even go to the nine EMA. I'm not. I'm just going to say just under today's low. And if it actually climbs, if it, everything's working in your favor and you're still long in this new position tomorrow at 10 o'clock when I'm doing my show, then you want to be adding if it takes out today's high at any point, either today or tomorrow, if it takes out the high, you could then add another small bit and just treat this as a trade. I hope that helps. Uh, next question I had was, could I look at, uh, I'm going to get back to all the different uh, Today, I promised myself there were so many questions about stocks I never got to. Uh, yesterday, I'm going to get to them today. Sam, that's uh, Boston Beer. Uh, this is Boston Beer A shares. Makes a long legged doji candle all time high at 1,349.98. I wasn't even looking at the price. I forgot. This is almost like Shopify was up in the, the quadruple digits. And comes down to the, the 300s. In this case, you're down to 319. <coughs> so, uh, oh, I can't remember now. Uh, thoughts on it, Sam, for a new long term position. So, if you're looking at a long term position, the rectangle formation this is slightly, this is a declining, uh, a very narrow declining um, right there, rectangle formation. I can't draw. A declining rectangle formations unless I use trend lines. So let me just go to this, show you that. 
And I'll go to this, show you that. So this is what we've got in the weekly chart long term. I'm going to make two suggestions because a person who asked me, I, I know you use options. Just to get a starter position, why don't you go out to August? You can go to July. I think July is the third week is a Friday, immediately the third Friday. Yeah, the 15th. Um, no, that's too soon. You said long-term position. Why don't you go to August? It's trading at 319. And look at a an in-the-money 310 call. If the in the money, if you can get it, I'm just making a guess now. I, I suspect that going out that far, so you've got uh, you've got nine points in already because it's t nine points over the 310 level, plus maybe three and a half to four points. So if it's trading at about 13, if you can get it in the next week or two at 10.50, 10.75, I would say why don't you Take that as your starter position. I'll be back and let me do a little analysis on it because it's got the Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down, pattern in the monthly chart. I'll be back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, yeah, let me just say, uh, Kevin, yes, I, we are still long the Dow. There shouldn't be a confusing message. My bias right now is to say I don't believe we've finished the long side of the Dow. That just make it as simple as that. I don't, I'm not saying how high we can go. I'm just saying... My work says we are still uh, looking at higher highs at this particular point. We'll see what happens. All right. So back to Sam. Uh, this is Boston Beer Company. SAM is the symbol 320 right now, round number, uh, up 83 cents. Had a big spike uh, in the daily chart. 
hit the the uh, 50 period expansion moving average and now it's pulling back a little bit it's underneath the nine and four 14 period moving averages but we're looking at this um, thing but actually um, uh, Dan in the den did an even better thing. I was looking at the calls. We were looking actually pretty much at the same thing. He's looking at it a completely opposite way. He says, regarding Sam Basil, um, I'm thinking of selling uh, out the money, uh, uh, puts a few months out, uh, about 10% below the market, nice premiums, and repeating over and over until they get put to me. If the short term improves a lot, I may use the proceeds to buy calls with the intention to exit. I like, I love your idea. I think that's a really good idea. The only thing I'd be looking at right now is that you might have a little problem. Is at 320. If on any weekly close, it actually closes above 342. That's a big ask from a stock that's just made consistently narrow uh, ranges all week, every week for the past uh, many months, since January, in fact, and, and consistently made lower highs and lower lows. That's the, that's the ideal interpretation of a bear phase. Low lows and lower highs, low lows and lower highs. So that's what I'm looking at. I just want to give you the exact number on the weekly 14-period uh, moving average. Yes, 349.50. Um, if, if it's able at any, any time to close, even just one, not hit, but close above 350, in the uh, weekly chart, I suspect that that's going to be the sign to say that this whole basing period between 350 and the most recent low of what on earth have oh, there it is. Uh, the most important uh, low that was made about eight sessions ago of 267, oh, 287 round number low. You didn't tell me. You're always looking at round numbers like I am. 287.00. So that's a round num Oops. A round number low and that date was well, whatever it is uh, maybe the 18th or so of june and that's going to be important uh, that if it doesn't take 287 out in the next i'd even go to friday a week tomorrow a week no no friday a week wait what is today wednesday yes wednesday i keep thinking it's thursday it's wednesday and um if it doesn't do that i think it could be starting on its way towards the high. And that's the reason why I was thinking I would prefer just my own way of looking at it would be to have an out the money, a longer term call, but try to in the money call, but wait for something lower. And if it doesn't come down in the next day or two, I'd have to probably make it a 315 call. And uh, so that it's in the money some part and just treat it as if it was a long position. That's why because you're looking at it with probably making slightly lower lows. I think it's in the process of attempting, not making, but attempting. Look at the MACD, the way it's been improving. Look at the stochastic, it's way uh, higher than it was before. I think technically it's starting to just show signs of some improvement. Uh, talking about some improvement, now the Dow's up 170, S&P's up 10. We'll see. We've got a narrow range waiting for the for the Fed. Uh, next question I had was, I'm going to go to it right now, AMD. I, I think we had it yesterday, but I didn't actually fulfill what I wanted to do. I was... In the process of talking about it, then I think I got distracted. I looked at other, other aspects of AMD. So the question was, oh, can you look at AMD? I'm long from 81. It's trading at 78.01. I'm only imagining right now, uh, Mike, that you say that you're long, and that's the most recent long, that you, you, you went long maybe yesterday or it just in this particular down phase over the last two weeks or three week, yeah, week and a half. Because if that's the case, that's one thing. If you've been long from 81, way back in uh, May and saw it rally to the 200 period exponential moving average peak D, remember how important peak Ds are and the 200 period moving average, just look at this. Um, look how important the 200 period moving average was as resist support and resistance and then I made the sine wave, I was speaking about this yesterday, uh, a cup formation, arch formation, cup formation, arch formation and then a huge cup formation going back to the 200 period moving average at a D and then it pulls back sharply, and it hasn't started the cup formation. So if you were in from before, now I have to think of it completely differently, <clears throat> because the one thing I would say is, because it's at 77, well, it's, it's five points lower, so it's about 8%. If it goes deeper than that, then my rule of thumb is, <clears throat> if it gets back to your entry point of 81, you have, I personally, immediately get out. I've thought it through already, saying I love it, coming back like that, I'm getting right back in, but I'm getting out of that initial position 
because it didn't do what I wanted it to, I was wrong. Now I'm starting a brand new position. But if you're only in from a few days ago, this is one where, personally, I would have had a stop below the lows, most recent lows. That's water over the dam or whatever they would say. It took out 79.41, the low of the 17th. So what I'm going to say right now is I would give it just a little longer on the day. I'm, all, I'm down to the day. I don't know whether you've got it as a longer-term position or a shorter-term position, but the MACD is very weak. The stochastic is at 16%. The on-balance one is the only thing that's oversold, saying to me it's getting ready for at least a bounce. What? A bounce says maybe it goes from 77 to 83, the um, 40, uh, 40, pink nine-period moving average. Well, that would be very good, but that's probably not what you were expecting when you got it at 81. So all I'm going to do is this. is I Now it's risk-reward. I would have a stop on some part. You asked me about it, so I'm going to tell you what I do. I'd have a stop in some part of my position. This is kind of what we, I do with my subscribers all the time. We take something off on the way up. So we've built up a little kitty so we can move around our initial course stop from the entry point or short position, whatever it is. And the other thing is um, I, could, I would put that back under certain conditions. So here I am. I'm going to say to you today's low is 77.10. It's 50 cents higher than that. Because you've been in it on this pullback and you haven't gotten out, I'm suspecting you are prepared to go even a little bit more on your stop position. So I would make 76.50 my intraday stop on at least some part of my position. Maybe not the whole thing, but some part of my position. Why? Because if this turns around, and I'm, I've been complaining about why the semiconductors just have not moved to the upside like I think they should, um, I mean, what they need to, they don't need to shoot, they don't shoot anything. They need to do that for me to get a sense that the market has a core of the, um, the engine of the market is really the chips, the, micro, the, the semiconductors. And just like oil is the, it was for 150 years, basically or 130 years, the core of, of world economies. So now we've included the uh, the microchips. Those chips are really important. So this is important, the fact that it's fading. And I'd also said, I, I, I typed in that advanced micro has gone from single digits over the decades. I followed it to way big, big triple digit gains. Uh, the last one was up in the 160s. And here it is, uh, cut in half at 77. So I'm saying, please, I would, I would have a stop and at least a part of the position. And then what I would do is if after 2.30 this afternoon, whatever is left, if you've still got holding some, then I would say to you, if it has a really good rally into Friday, I would raise my stop on my core position, saying I don't want to go through this again. I'd raise my stop and I'd split that in two positions and I'd have a trading position and my core that says, no matter what, if it takes that out, I'm done. It was my price. And let me get back, I think it's worth showing you, it's huge. I don't know if this is another a down phase. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I don't know whether this is telling us about the market, but look, it was my good advices. Uh, let's just go back uh, uh, to oh, whatever I've got, got to be here. 1992, it's at $4.50, and it makes a high in 1997 at uh, $24. Then it pulls back to a low of, uh, in August of 1998, it goes down to single digits again, 638. And then it screams in two, June of 2000 to 48.50, a peak F in the Chapman wave. Then it pulls back again, goes to a low in 2000. And remember, this is where the general market, I, I might be wrong, I can't remember which is which, but I believe the Dow made a low, uh, yes, in October of 2002, the, the, the um, I believe that the semiconductor index made a low, and it was six months later that the Dow made a low in 2003. I'm just, if I remember correctly, but anyway, they, they rotated six months apart between the uh, the uh, either S&P or the um SMHs. Anyway, so this goes to three dollars and ten cents in October of two thousand and two. Screams up to forty two seventy in March of two thousand and six, and then it, it it I mean it's done this over and over, and then it traded in a narrow range, fairly narrow range for AMD all the way to two thousand and fifteen when it makes a low of I forgot to tell you had these all typed in once upon a time a dollar sixty one in July of two thousand and fifteen. Screams up to thirty four. In 2018, as a sharp pullback to the 18 area, and then runs to what? To the most recent high. Uh, yeah, we are the most recent high of. Did I forget to type it in? I'll type it in now. 164.46 in November 2021. Is that 64.46? 11-11-2021. And here it is at 77. So is this another one of those monster? And look at this. Look at this Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down in the monthly chart. So I'm just saying, I don't know if this is one of those big moves down, the, a secular move um, in, a, in advanced micro that it's all over for now. But it looks like it's not doing very well at this particular point. So I'm just saying, be real careful. <laughs> I took a long way to say that. But just be, be real careful. And um, just, you know, have your stops in. You can Look, if this starts to turn around and it looks great, and by Monday of next week, it's trading at 82.50 or 83.90, right by the, for, uh, the pink nine period moving average, and the general market actually has moved up, which I'm anticipating there's a good chance that it does. Um, could be wrong. That's just the way I'm looking at it right now. Then you can always just jump in, and it could, it could, could the next move could be 86 to 88, and then maybe it runs out of steam again. But you can always make it up a small percentage. But when it starts to get bigger, you got to be careful. 
So if that helps you, small position on a stop just below today's low, but I would still have it at about 86. I'd be reassessing everything. And the most important thing is uh, raise your stop as it moves up because these are three ugly candles. All right, whew, got that out the way. Let's go. The question came in about LRN. Oh, no, that was just to say that it got moved into the uh, as uh, the 600, the um, small cap 600s. Uh, okay, next question came in here. Uh, let me just see. So that, so Sam, oh, talking about the Eiffel Tower. Uh, look, Sam has the Eiffel Tower. I drew this in and I said, if you take the law of 290.02 back in 2020, I think it was February or so, March, the March law of 2020, it screamed up to a high of 13, I got to put this in now, 1349.98. 13, I think 49.98, I don't know, I've already forgotten what it was. Um, but whatever it is, <laughs> and then it plummets down. You're one month late to retest 290, and the low was 287, so we've taken it out. This is exactly where it needs to rally, because if it doesn't, this will just continue to drift lower. So that's why I'm saying uh, the, the next a break to the upside is going to be really important. But if it does that and gets to the uh, 350 on Sam, Boston Beer Company, A shares, um, that's just, it's a different, do they say kettle of fish when we're talking about beer? Yeah, yeah, fish and chips. Yeah, that's it. So that we're looking at, uh, that's what I'd be looking at. But I love your idea as well. I'm just saying, be careful. There's another way to look at NTR question came in by zip 90. So, folks, go, go check the den out. It's really just a wonderful medium uh, for, for voicing ideas all the time. There are ideas, some, just a lot of fabulous, fabulous uh, tra uh, traders. I call them traders because uh, at the same time, there are people that uh, do technical analysis. Some people that do fundamental, mix it with technical. You know, Tommy Jr. does his 9 a.m. show. He loves to mix up the technicals and the uh, Nuveen limited oh okay um he loves to mix them up and i love that because it means you're putting together your your basic core analysis on the fundamental basis and then you try to put it together with the um with the technicals is that new Vien limited okay what was the question uh, any thoughts yeah my thoughts on that is that 200 period moving average at, at 83.84 is trading at 82.72 uh, this is NTR trading 82.72 down a dollar 90. This is just too stuck at that 200 period moving average. Let's look at it in a few days. If it can break into the 90, uh, 88 pair level by this time next week, I think that's a good sign. It's just not a good sign if it takes out the 78 uh, area key support level. Right at this moment, I don't see, I, I can't see anything in the uh, daily chart, but I need to open this up to see the full picture. Yeah. Look at that, lower lows and lower highs. Now it's trying to form some kind of a base. But look how the MACD crossed positive, and yet it didn't help the price very much. And look at the stochastic rally. I don't like when the technicals rally. This is called wheel slipping. A wheel, uh, this is like a, a, a churning. It's like when you're on the snow and you put your foot on the gas and you don't go anywhere. That's why I have all-wheel drive. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, that, that's what you're looking at right here. So that was that one. Um, got that for advanced micro devices. So, as I said, I don't know if advanced micro devices, you know, I remember this from, oh, I just, his name went flying by. Um, there was a guy who ran it. He was an amazing, he was one of those on trial. He was very much like Musk in many ways. He was always out there talking about advanced micro devices, pushing it. Um, he was fabulous. I loved him, but now I can't remember his name. It was a long time ago. Uh, he was the CEO. I believe he was CEO. And um, oh, what was his name? Hey, he'll come to me at some point. Not not important. The fact is that it, it, is this the big move down? And I think at this point, I have to say, I kind of think it is. And we'll have to see where it stops, where it lands and where it stops. So what is this? Uh, thank you, Pat. Um, it appears Powell done speaking in Portugal. Hey, what is this? Powell uh, was riding Navarre. He was, uh, what was this? He was on... He was on the big one. He was doing the 100-foot surfing. Good old pal. I like that. Boy, I mean, those waves are unbelievable for a guy who grew up watching waves at the very tip of Africa in Cape Town, South Africa, as a, as a, as a preteen. Hmm. Born there. 
Um, those were quite some ways nothing like a hundred foot footers, but there were some really big ones. Um, all right, enough said with that. Oh, is that a break? We we're about to get the very last segment. Uh, snap, what do you have? Snap, snap, questions, questions. I haven't finished uh, all of my stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking at the questions. Uh, yeah, Shopify. I'll do that when we get back, and then I'll wrap up because I haven't finished all the uh, technical aspects. Ah, Shopify is just stuck in a rectangle formation. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses, where you can now get up to 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services, and they never expire. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollars before the sale ends Tuesday, July 5th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So I just want to do this. Uh, so um, um, Mimi wants you to know about the USO. Let me just do that quickly because I think it's important. Uh, in the den, uh, it's mentioned 2.76 million drop in oil inventory. Uh, oil's pulled back just a little bit uh, from the high that we were looking at earlier today, that is the intraday high. It's now at 112.66, up 90 cents. So I still think that crude oil is in a, a rectangle formation here, and it's just in a trading band. So when you look at USO, you'll see that the monthly chart did have the same as we were looking at in that other chart where this is an E slash C because it went just nominally above the previous high, actually a little bit more than nominally above the previous high, and it did close two out of three sessions. So that's kind of good. And that says that the magnet in the USO, United States Oil Fund LP, the magnet of the 90 area is still there. But I think it's going to be a bit of a struggle right now. I, I could be totally wrong about this. We're talking about oil. Anything can happen. But it looks to me like if I go through Exxon, Mobil, and the others, that just on a very short-term basis, 
you're looking at a bit of a struggle and they taking a digestive phase. So I'm just going to say if you are in if you're looking at where will it go, it's it's testing the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. If the USO in the next two days closes above 88.30, it's at 85.47 right now. That says, you know what? In this particular pattern, there's a good chance it's going to try to go towards 1991, the previous high. So that make that clear. Okay, the other thing that I had was the dollar. The dollar is acting um, very nicely here. It's not great. This is the same thing. I think it's just stuck in a range. Acting really well in the higher level, but consolidating recent gains, that can co continue for a little while. If you're looking at the, the USD JPY, look at this, this is the, a new, uh, new high. So that helps, the, that helps the dollar as well. So I'm going to wrap it up. Yeah, I, I don't know if that is here. Um, I'm not able to stack out. I've got a few so I cannot do it. Uh, I will see you Check out both people and check out Tiger Dollar Sale. Uh, this is a great time to look up the past positions going to